The next question you might have is, what happens when we have more than one substituent on the benzene ring? What is the regioselectivity in those cases? As you might imagine, things can get very complicated very quickly, but there are a few straightforward cases that we can discuss. So in the first case, we'll call case one, um, we can have the substituents simply reinforce one another. Reinforce, right? So they're going to both direct to the same position. Okay, so this is, this is a very straightforward um, scenario. So for example, if we have this molecule, so paranitrotoluene, okay, so the, uh, the methyl group is an ortho para director. The para group is blocked by the nitro. So the only place that this can react is, or direct to is, is ortho positions. So we're directing there and there, right? Now the nitro group, on the other hand, is a strong meta director, but that's also to those same positions, okay? So <clears throat> for example, if we were to try to nitrate this molecule, um, we would see a very good, very high selectivity for that second nitro group to go next to the methyl group. Okay, so high regio selectivity. Okay, so that's, that's a very easy case, right? It's the case one where both groups are reinforcing one another. <clears throat> okay, and then in case two, um, case two tends to also be straightforward. So this is going to be where the substituents uh, basically um, oppose one another, right? So they're pushing in uh, to different positions, oppose one another. So what would happen in this case? Um, two substituents are fighting for different positions. Um, and we could uh, look at an example here. Right, so you have a methyl group and then a methoxy group. <clears throat> now here, the methoxy is trying to direct ortho, right, to those two positions. And then the methyl is trying to also go ortho, but those ortho positions are different from what the methoxy wants to do, right? So what's going to win? Well, what's going to win in this case? And basically, um, what happens if we were to try to do a Friedel Crafts isolation, for example, or really any um, EAS reaction, is it's the stronger electron donor that wins, okay? So if you remember the reactivity chart that we had in the previous video, um, the, um, an oxygen substituent is a much uh, stronger um, activating group than a methyl group is. And so the, the methoxy is going to win in this case, and we're going to see a very, very high selectivity for acylation at the ortho position to the, to the methoxy, to the, uh, to the stronger donor. Okay, so the stronger donor is the one that's going to win, okay? And so this is where knowing the relative uh, positions of the um, functional groups on that chart um, is important. And in general, uh, in general, nitrogen wins over oxygen, um, but both of these, when they're um, just substituted either uh, with hydrogen or with an alkyl group, are going to win over uh, the cases where you've got um, an acyl group on that heteroatom. Um, and so ester, and then all the way at the end uh, of this, you're going to have um, the, the uh, alkyl groups. So I'll just put R there, right? So when things oppose, the thing that is the better stabilizer of a cat carbocation is going to be the thing that wins. And now the final case um, is, is the one that's uh, definitely the messiest by far, okay? So case three is going to be um, another uh, ambiguity of ortho and para positions. Okay, so let's look at a specific example. Okay, 
we've got um, we've got uh, a chloral group and a methyl group. It's a CH3 group there, right? So the methyl group is trying to direct um, ortho uh, to itself. Um, the chloro is also trying to direct ortho to itself. Um, so what's going to happen here? Well, there's there's three different positions, um, and they all actually are reinforcing. So what do we expect out of this? Well, it's likely to be a little bit of a messy reaction for sure. Um, but the thing that we can um, say is that the, the lowest preference of these three activated sites is going to be the one um, that's actually between the two substituents, right? So that position right there is between the two. And there's going to be some steric in, uh, interference between uh, for reacting at that site uh, versus reacting at either of the others. Okay, so we might expect there to be um, a probably a mixture of products here. So this dichloride in this case, um, and we'll probably also expect um, a good amount of this isomeric one as well, where the chloride goes up here, right? So both substituents are directing to, to that position and to that position. Um, but we're gonna see relatively little of this isomer. Okay, where that chloride, that new chloride has gone in between the two substituents. And that's sort of a general uh, principle that um, all things being equal, uh, steric hindrance is going to um, uh, you know, lessen the uh, reactivity um, at adjacent sites just because atoms are bumping up against each other. Okay, so the, um, the rule here is uh, and, unless there's no other choice, um, don't react between uh, two groups that are meta to one another. All right, so those are three uh, relatively straightforward rules for when we have two uh, substituents on a benzene ring.